these days, almost every occasion calls for cake, which afford bakers the opportunity to display their capabilities in diverse ways imaginable. As you plan for that occasion, a baker is ready to dazzle you with a thematic cake decoration that would make your event a memorable one. You're watching Baker's World and NTA. My name is Funke Oyeyeli. Thank you for joining me on the program. Today's episode of Baker's World promises to be an exciting baking experience as our guest baker and an upcoming baker will show us how to make a celebration cake for your viewing pleasure. Also, you will get to meet a professional baker who will share with you her over a decade baking experience and a career and a lot more. On this segment, our guest baker and our assistant will show us some practical steps on how to make an amazing christening cake. I'm sure you're going to learn something new from our baker today. Well, let's get started. We're going to be doing a strawberry cake today, and it's going to be a christening cake. So what we need for the strawberry cake is right before us here. We have our ingredients laid out on the table. Here we have 350 grams of eggs. We have 350 grams of flour. We have 350 grams of margarine. And here we have 260 grams of sugar. We are also going to use um, yogurt. We'll use three over four cups of yogurt. And then we'll use half a tablespoon of baking powder. We'll use a drop of coloring. We have red coloring here and we also have here our flavor. We'll use half a tablespoon of flavor. So we go straight on to the procedure. We're going to start with the sugar and the margarine. Ajara, the margarine. Thank you. So we're going to cream this until it is light and fluffy. So we are done with the creaming. As you can see, what we have here is a lot lighter than it was when we started. And it is fluffy and it is very creamy. I'm going to scoop this out from the mixing bowl into this other bowl here. The next step now is we are going to whisk our eggs. And if you notice, I've changed the mixing device here. I'm now using the balloon whisk. strawberry flavor. The next thing we're going to be doing is sieving our fly again. What air does to your cake is that it makes it very light and fluffy. We're going to add our baking powder into it. And we put it into the flour. Make sure it goes wrong. We're going to be folding in our flour into our margarine and sugar mixture. And we'll do that in three installments. We'll put in the flour in three installments, and then we'll put in the eggs in two installments. That's alternating. So the first is, we start with flour. So the first is the flour. Mix it. Make sure it goes round. Okay, so that is okay. So the next we're going to put the egg. Remember we are putting our egg in two installments. So we'll put half of it and then we'll put the remaining half later. Later. 
So flower goes in next again. So this is the second installment we are adding. Okay, so we're going to add the remaining eggs into it. Make sure you scoop everything out. So we'll find, add the final part of the flour to the mixture. So we're going to add the yogurt to the batter. Okay. And then we also put the color. Because it's a straw berry cake, we need to put a little of red because we want pink color. So just a little of red. Thank you. Make sure that the color goes round. So we are done with preparing our batter. We are going to be preparing the pan by applying margarine on it. is ready for the oven. How long is it going to take for it to bake? About 30 minutes okay. at 300 degrees centigrade. Okay. While we wait for our cake to bake, we're going to take a quick break and when we return, we'll meet our guest baker. Sometimes when uh, business is low, I find myself even feeling sick. But once a cake order comes, the kind of energy that comes into me, okay. it gets, keeps me going. I just get energized and I, I, I get to work and then I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I feel very good. Our baker today is Mrs. Mercy Lami Negedu, born about six decades ago into a family of eight as the only girl amongst seven boys in the Basenge land of Kogi State. The 1984 Ahmadubello University graduate of sociology worked as an admin officer with the Delta Steel Company in Delta State, where she met and fell in love with her husband, engineer Lucas Negedu. She transferred her service to the then National Electric Commission, now Independent National Electric Commission. A lover of knowledge, Mother Mercy enrolled for her master's in public administration and obtained the certificate in 1992 still from ABU Zaria. All along, she kept nursing an inner passion for the culinary world, particularly the bakery. In 2004, the passion became overwhelming and she bowed in. But she believes in being equipped properly inside out for any challenge. So she went back to school to study more about her passion for bakery. From the bakery school in Caracas, Venezuela, to PME Knightbridge, UK, for sugar craft. Today, Mercy has carved a niche for herself as a creative and certified baker. Her brand, Miller Cakes, has produced not just cakes and confectionaries, but over a hundred students in the industry. She has client base across countries. She has gone beyond the next level in cake business. She is happily married and has four lovely children. Join us as we take a chat and tutorials with the legendary baker, Mrs. Mercy Lami Negedu. When you endeavor to put sustainability at the forefront of your mind when starting up your business, that business is sure to stand the test of time. One woman who has built a thriving business over a decade, Mrs. Mercy Lami Negedu, she is the CEO of Miller Cakes. It's good to have you on the Baker's Ward. It's a delight to be here. Well, we know that the baking industry, a lot of things have evolved. It has a lot of creativity, the social media, and new trends. How have you been able to keep up with the new trends and sustain your business? Well, when I started business um, about 14 years ago, it wasn't like this. Um, we were very few bakers in town. 
and um, the business was really very thriving then. But then as we went along the way, we discovered that so many trends were coming in. And to remain relevant in the business, I had to train and retrain myself. I got to learn a lot about the social media and uh, try to make myself relevant on social media. And uh, with this trend, uh, I have been able to keep the business going. I have been able to advertise myself. I have not uh, been relegated to the background in it. As a busy businesswoman, how have you been able to balance your home life with your work life and your social life as well? Well, I have been very fortunate because at the time I started, um, I already had my children and um, my children have been of help to me. My family has been a strong support to me. My husband has supported me in this business all through. And my business premise is not far from the house. So it enables me to, to, to check on the house at the same time run the business effectively. Now, in the baking industry as it is today, what do you think can be done to further improve it? Okay. I discovered that most of our tools and our equipment are imported. And there are some of them that are so simple to make. I don't think it would be too much, uh, it would take too much to produce those, um, those tools. Like we have a lot of silicone, we use a lot of silicone molds, we use a lot of metal cutters, plastic cutters. These are the things that manufacturers in Nigeria can produce. We don't have to import them. And if we get people who go into this, if people who go into production of this, it will help us a lot because it will bring down the cost. And this will create job opportunities for the young ones in the labor market. What's your advice for young people that are thinking of starting up a profession in this industry? First and foremost, they have to have a passion for what they want to do. Because it is the passion that will drive you in this business. If you don't have the passion, you find that along the way you will drop out. And then second, you have to acquire the relevant knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, you will not be able to survive in the business. You have to go for training with seasoned bakers and decorators. That way you are able to learn. And learning, you don't stop, you keep learning. Now let's talk about today's cake that you're baking a christening cake. How are you going to go about the designing of it? As a baker, when you want to bake a cake, the first thing you think about is the occasion. What is the occasion? And what goes with that occasion? Like for a christening cake, you, what you think about when it comes to christening cake, you think about babies. Uh -huh. So when you think about babies, the, what came to my mind is baking a cradle for a baby and a baby lying in the cradle and then all the accessories that go with uh, with babies, like if you look like the cake, on the cake, I, I intend to do um, um, things like teddy bear, bunnies, and uh, ducks. Those are things that go with christening cakes. And that is why, that, was, that is what came to my mind when I was planning on how to do this cake. And thank you so much for having this chat with me. It's really been nice having this chat with you. Thank you so much. Well, that was our chat with the CEO of Mela Cakes, Mrs. Mercy Lami Negedu. Now, our cake should be about done now, so let's go back to the bakery and continue with the decoration. Our cake is ready now, and it's cold, so we're going to commence decorating the cake now. I'm applying corn flour on the table because I don't want it to stick to the table. I'm going to roll it wide enough to cover the board. I'll do that until it's wide enough. Okay, so before applying the brown fondant on the board, I want to texture it. This is a wood grain textured mat. So I'll place it on it and then I'll roll it. Trim off the excess. So we are through with the board. We are going to set this aside. Then we go on to trimming the cake. So what I want to achieve with this cake is a baby crib. Remember, we are doing a christening cake. 
this cake is not high enough. So I'm going to cut a little from this just to build it up. Okay. So the cake is high enough for me now. We're going to be applying buttercream in the middle of the cake. That's the joining that we have there. We apply buttercream to it and then all over the cake. What the buttercream does is it enables the fondant to stick on the cake. So while she's doing that, I'll be rolling out the fondant. Next, I'm going to cover with my rolled fondant. You have to be careful so that you don't have pleats. So I'll take off the excess and put it away. I'll put this aside and go back to my square board. So what I want to achieve with this square board is I want to apply some brown airbrush color on it to make it look more like wood. So I use my brush and spray it. So we're going to transfer the cake to the main board. I need plenty of space in front because I want to do some work there. So to prepare this, I'll need what we call messy paste. Messy paste helps our fondant pieces to stick together. So I'm going to apply some of the messy paste on the side of the cake here. So I'll put it up this way. Then I repeat the same thing on this side. This is very light colored uh, yellow uh, fondant. So I'm going to pleat it. Press it down a bit here. That keeps the plate in place. I want a fabric effect. So I place it this way. I'm going to go on to painting the fabric here to make it look more like real fabric. So I have here two shades of green dust color and red color. And I also have my edible spirit. I'm going to mix it with edible spirit so that I can paint. So I just put a drop of edible spirit in each of the colors. So I'm done with the red color. So I'm moving on to the second color, which is the lighter green color. I'm trying to paint the flower with leaves. So the red color is the flower. So I'm done with painting. I'm going to go next to the um, other parts of the baby crib. So I'm going to put this on one side and then the second one on the other side. are pillars made from fondant. I made them and allowed them to dry. So I'm going to apply it on the four corners of the bed. We have a baby mold here, a baby that is lying down. So she will be doing that while I will do so. I will use my uh, extruder to get out a rope that I will use in the finishing of the crib. So 
Okay, so next I'm going to place this. That's behind, I want to pick something. It will cut you. Give it some movement so that it looks like real fabric. So our baby is providing the clip. So we are going to add some little details on it on the other side of the clip. this wow this is really beautiful I love all the details on it you've really captured the essence of a crystal cake including a sleeping baby well, well done. Good job. Thank You've you. done a really good job. You've captured all the details of a crib. Well done. Thank you. Well, if you can follow all the steps on this episode, you can also make a beautiful cake like this. We appreciate you so much for joining us on Baker's World. Hope you found this episode very educative. For your comments, likes, and feedbacks, you can reach us on all our social media platforms, on our Facebook, Gmail, and Instagram. It's Baker's World on MTA. Well, until next week, it's bye for now. My name is Funke Uyeli.